Good evening once again and a very warm welcome to Rwanda Television News. My name is Gloria Mutesi. Starting us off tonight, citizens around the country are worried about the plight of their counterparts who are infected with the COVID-19 virus and find themselves sick but do not comply with the health authorities' decisions to stay in their homes and instead go out to join fellow citizens. Rwanda National Police now says violators of these regulations should be brought to justice. Innocent Mugawa starts us off tonight with this. In Rotonde Sala, Sharonji sector, in Rurindo district, a resident of Tare Rehabilitation Center escaped from the center and had contracted the COVID-19 virus. Neighbors say they are concerned that he may have escaped and might have contaminated them in large numbers. We are worried about the boy who escaped and they say he is suffering from coronavirus and he can infect us. This disease is bad and we are scared. The head of our cell told us that if you see these people, we should immediately provide information to arrest them because they could also touch us. And no one had been found in our cell with COVID-19, which is what we fear. Given the fact that they might come and contaminate us, yet we were trying to avoid it, we are worried that once they reach us, we might be put in a lockdown. Shoronji sector leader Asaba Gahima Emanuel confirmed the information and said that the resident was arrested in the forest in Rutonde Cell and was returned to quarantine. Randa Biomedical Center DG Dr. Sabine Sabimana says the number of cases of COVID-19 is on the rise with 90% of the patients being cared for at home. However, some do not respect the regulations in place. We had very few cases under home-based care, but as the number increases, we find that we have some who want to continue with their daily lives. We have seen many cases, like this where we call them, and they tell you that I wanted to buy something from the shops. People still do not understand the gravity of this matter, and that by doing this, they get others at risk too. They need to understand that anyone who has COVID-19 can transmit this to others and they can easily die from it and they will have played a part in that. Rwanda National Police spokesperson CP John Bosco Kabeda says that people who have been tested and found to be infected with COVID-19 who are ordered to stay at home but exceed it will not be tolerated as this is a crime punishable by the courts. When this started, people would say I'm sick with COVID-19, let me stay indoors and see if I can get well. But today, they're not worried and they feel they can infect others. We want to warn them that if you have COVID-19 and you are ordered to stay indoors or in the hospital and you are given the dressing machine, one should not go against it and they should be punishable by law, which could lead to imprisonment. Statistics from the Ministry of Health show that since the outbreak of the pandemic in the country, those who contracted the disease are 9,900, about 7,000 have recovered, while 2,800 are still sick and 90% were treated from home. Now still in COVID-related news, health counselors in some of the sectors in Rubavu district say that among the challenges they face is lack of special protective equipment. When visiting COVID-19 patients in their home-based care program, as well as patients complaining that the health counselors don't get to them. In one of the villages in Rujerero sector, health counselors are visiting a COVID-19 patient who is being treated at home to see how they are doing. When they are not visiting COVID-19 patients, these health counselors are moving from home to home evaluating residents to see if they have symptoms of COVID-19. These health counselors point out that they face a challenge of inadequate protective gear and thermometers to take people's temperature, with 10 health counselors sharing one thermometer. We don't have enough protective gear. There are sometimes the patient is critical and they need support from you, which becomes a challenge. So we would be glad if they could give us more protective gear that even covers up everywhere. We 
When I'm testing two families, for instance, it's possible that another health counselor from another cell will come and ask for the thermometer to work on her families as well. So that time they spend coming to get it, all these are challenges. Among the other challenges they face is the lack of airtime to call and coordinate and follow up on the patients. And as a result, when these counselors go to visit the patients at home, they find some patients are, are out of quarantine, largely due to a lack of sustainability. There are those we follow up on and they tell us they are home, but when we go to visit them, we don't find them at home, especially those at the border. There are those who are supposed to follow up, but they have no capacity to take care of themselves. They are not capable of getting food for the 7 or 14 days they are required to stay in quarantine. And we have no social welfare to take care of such people in the cell. Jisenyi Hospital Director Dr. Tuganeezu Orest points out that in the absence of adequate equipment, health counselors monitor patients in a trained manner. The equipment might be less, but as you know, the pandemic keeps changing, and the number of health counselors is also increasing in the country. So we give out the equipment based on how the pandemic keeps evolving. Where there are high numbers of infections is why we supply more equipment. More than 100 COVID-19 patients are currently being treated in their homes in Rubavu district, while five critically ill people are being treated at Gisenyi Hospital. It's while the Rujerero Health Center that used to treat COVID-19 patients no longer receives patients. Now, a cross-section of traders say that the working hours and days don't amount to a month and that its time taxes and rent is reduced. However, the Rwanda Revenue Authority says that a person is taxed according to their cells, not according to the hours they've worked. Martina Abeira has this story. In Nyerujenji Market, one of the businesses is closed due to lack of rent and others are not working due to the lack of customers like wedding dress vendors. Even those who are still working express their concern of being charged taxes and rent, yet they don't work like they used to due to the efforts that are being taken to curb down the spread of the virus. <laughs> The challenge we are facing is that we are paying rent yet we are not working. We are also paying taxes and are all due this January. We would like them to come together and see how they can make it easier for us. They charge us the same amount per month as usual. We work every other day, yet our foods can stay fresh for more than a day, and we suffer a great loss. We want to make sure that if we work for 15 days, they charge us a half of what we used to pay. It was not possible for us to get investors who have commercial buildings to talk about this. Nevertheless, the chairperson of the Rwanda Private Sector Federation, Robert Bafakurera, says that the builders of commercial houses mostly have bank debts that they have to pay, and the business of having people to work in shift is better than being permanently closed. Uh, when a person doesn't work like they normally used to, it usually causes people to experience loss, but also what I would urge traders to do is that they can utilize the presence of the existing technology. People who build commercial houses do so on the loans given to them by the bank, so unless there was a way to reduce the interest on the loan, so if they are not paid, they can't pay as well. What I would like to encourage people to do is to support each other where possible. So, Karangwa Kassia, Director of Domestic Trade at the Ministry of Trade and Industry, says that in terms of leasing that is not in line with the time the traders are working, there should be an agreement between the tenant and the landlord. If it fails, further decisions can be taken by the authorities. Fifty percent of the market is not fair. It is so that they can be helped to avoid COVID-19. When people weren't working a few months ago, you saw that agencies like BNR, Minicom, and other partners like Minicofin made it easier for people who are in debt to pay until they no longer had loans. And in rent, it is also required that the tenant negotiates with the landlord and agree on how to help the tenant in terms of paying rent without doing so at once. <laughs> 
mukwishura atishyura icyarimwe with regards to taxes, the Deputy Commissioner for Taxpayer Services at Rwanda Revenue Authority, Uwiton Zepolin, explains that it has not changed and that a person pays when he or she makes the declaration. So it's something that if a person makes a small amount of money, he doesn't give one out of four based on what he or she did last year for profit. For example, what he or she declared in 2019, but looks at what he or she did this year so that it makes it easier for him or her to make a profit based on what he or she made. We urge those who continue to look into the tax as an issue to abide by it because there was no tax increase or rate increase. Traders are also required to continue to comply with the COVID-19 prevention guidelines in their work and the challenges they continue to face should be presented to the relevant authorities for a solution. Martina Abera, RTV News. And the government of Rwanda has repossessed about 1.5 million plots of unregistered land, most of which are in the provinces. Lawmakers say that so far this is not a problem yet since no one has reclaimed their land and the government turned down their request. Innocent Mugabo has more of this story. The government has temporarily taken over the ownership of unregistered land until the owners come forward and have it registered. With about 1.5 million unregistered land temporarily taken over by the government, the southern province has the most with more than 500,000, the western province 400,000, the northern province with more than 300,000, and the eastern province with 261,000. Kigali City has the few plots of land, counting 31,000. These are some of the people that did not register their plots of land and those that participated in the practice. <laughs> There are those I managed to register. I provided all the paperwork, though I haven't received the land title. For that plot, I haven't managed to register. It is due to lack of enough capacity, since it involves taking the documents to the cell, which also passes it to the district. The government urged us to do it, and I also found it beneficial for the land to be fully mined. The fact is that there was some sort of negligence with some, but the good thing is that it's not yet too late. Mokamana Esperance, the Director General and Chief Registrar of Land Titles, explains more about the practice. This does not mean that the government has permanently taken over the ownership of these unregistered plots of land. The activities one has on the land must continue but adhere to the existing land use plans. The government repossessing them does not mean that the real owners have lost their property or the land. The Rwanda Land Management and Use Authority does not work like that. What we do is to put the information in the system to keep up with the times and whenever someone proves that the land is his or hers, we return it. Liberal Majambere, a lawyer at Rwanda Bar Association, says that this is not yet a legal issue. At the moment, this isn't a legal issue yet, since no one has come out to claim any of the repossessed plots of land, where one comes to reclaim it and maybe the government forbids. There it might involve us, but I believe the government can't also reach there. This was to just remind the owners that there are still unfulfilled duties with their land, which is registering it. Close observers of land use issues find that some of the reasons for some landlords include the fear of tax invasion, unlawful possession of government land, and negligence to some. On 15th October 2019, the government provided a three-month deadline for everyone to register their plots of land, but the period was later extended due to the COVID-19 pandemic until December 2020. More than 11.5 acres of land have already been registered nationwide. Innocent Mogabo, RTV News. Thanks very much, Innocent, for that report. Now, the Ministry of Trade and Industry has warned traders against hiking prices in the name of the COVID-19 pandemic. This comes even as citizens are complaining of the high prices of commodities. 
In various markets across the country, citizens are found lamenting over the hike in prices during this COVID-19 pandemic. However, most traders say that everything has gone up, including transportation costs. I used to buy this oil for 9,000 before Corona, but today it is at 11,000. It is a problem because, like you can see, the prices have gone up. Once in a while, we wake up to new prices on the market, and they only inspect once a month. But they should do this as often as possible so that the prices are standardized according to the international market, too. We do not have enough cows. We do not have enough meat because of the curfew. The Ministry of Trade and Industry, however, says that the pandemic should not be a reason for the price hikes. However, an official from the Ministry of Trade and Industry, Godans Mukha Murienzi, says that official prices have been announced and have to be followed. Even though people might think that the transportation has halted, this is not the picture as nothing has stopped both within and outside the country. We normally hold inspections in various markets to see that prices are hiked. Those caught doing this are penalized and a cost between 20,000 to 4 million. The ministry is called on the citizens to give information on the hike of prices so that a solution is quickly found. You're still watching Rwanda Television News. Now, since the Jiringa Munyarwanda program was launched in 2006, more than 10,000 families in the Nyagatare district have been provided with cows. Beneficiaries of the Jiringa Munyarwanda program are thankful for the progress they've made through the program. With steady growth, they've reached the level of raising and sharing cows with their neighbors. Umari Jed has more of this story. In 2015, the family of Dusabe Mungu Adel, a resident of Kanye Jesesel in Rugarama sector, was given a cow under the Jiringha program through a colleague. With breeding the cow, it is able to reproduce and the family lives off of it. In 2015, we were given a cow. We were given this cow by a colleague provided through the Jiringha Munyarkwanda program. The Dusabe Mungu family is said to have been living a difficult life before being provided with the cow. They confirm that it has been extremely beneficial in solving their problems. The cow reproduces every year. When the cow grows, I am able to sell it. It is valued at at least 200,000 randa francs. With that, I have been able to purchase four pieces of land that now add up to at least 900,000 randa francs. Our children are now able to drink milk and stay healthy. We are so thankful for the president. He is the perfect parent. Dayambaje Venant, another beneficiary of the Jinikha program, is also pleased with the cows she has been provided. In the wee hours of the morning, the assistant of Venant takes care of the cow after her fourth birth. They believe the cow has changed their lives for the better. <laughs> The cow improved my life in so many ways. It helped me build my home and take my children to school. Since the launch of Jiringha Munyarkwanda by His Excellency President Paul Kagame in 2006, more than 23,000 cows have been donated in Gatsibo district. Of these, about 10,492 were shared between other citizens. <laughs> I was given a cow by my neighbor who got a cow through the Jiringha Munyarkwanda program. The cow has helped me provide for my family and help better my children's lives. The Gatsiwa district officials confirmed that Jiringha Munyarkwanda program has improved the livelihoods of the people, especially by increasing agricultural productivity. The Gatsiwa district officials confirmed that Jiringha Munyarkwanda program has improved the livelihoods of the people, especially by increasing agricultural productivity through the use of manure from cows. According to the mayor of Gatsibo district, Gasana Richard, this is reflected in the increase of production per hectare. The cows assist in many ways. They provide manure which aids in agriculture. The residents are now able to harvest more per hectare than before. The production of maize has increased from 3 hectares to 6 hectares. 
In other districts, there are about 2,231 cows sold by the recipients, a culture that Mayor Gasana Richard says will not be tolerated. If the cows are exchanged and found to be used for the wrong reason, they are taken back and given to someone deserving. There are punishments placed for individuals that partake in these wrongdoings. In Gatsima district, the program has reached the fifth stage. Most of the cows currently being provided under the Jiringham Nyirgwanda program are provided through resharing. 60% of the 1,000 cows are expected to be donated to needy families in the current physical year, 2020 to 2021. Most of the cows will be donated through partners, government, and recipients of the Jiringhap Munyarwanda program. Umgari Jade, RTV News. That's it for tonight. Thanks for your company tonight. A gentle reminder to please wear your face mask and do all that is required of you to stop the spread of the pandemic because no one is safe until we all are. Otherwise, God bless you and keep you. And until next time, I am Gloria Mutisi.